happy Sunday. Welcome back to my podcast, The Good, The Bad, and the Future of Social Media. We focus on the world of Instagram, its advantages, disadvantages, and how the future of brands can be shaped around it. My idea is to design and implement a platform that will provide all listeners with an opportunity to become better educated on how, in our daily lives, social media can control and influence our actions. Today we are talking about success in the social media industry and self-branding. We are joined all the way from LA with the entrepreneur, Ryan Pownell. I hope you all had an amazing week. Let's get into it. <laughs> oh, sorry, good point. I don't want to interrupt. So how are you, Ryan? Oh, I'm good. I was just filming. Sorry. I'm amazing. <laughs> how are you? I'm great. So of you, course, you I... Good, Thank you. So do you. Yeah. <laughs> so of course, I follow you on all your platforms. You already know that. But I know some of our listeners don't. And I know you are so big on especially Instagram with over 200K. And your podcast is doing so well with almost 250K but I kind of wanted you to give a little bit of a bio and resume on like what you do on all your social media platforms for the audience if they don't follow you yet. Okay, so so on social media, I guess I guess it's more all pillow talk branded now, kind of, mm-hmm. sort of. I used to do like the douchebag F boy pics, I would say, <laughs> back in the day. You still add them in there sometimes. I gotta sneak them in, because people like Sarah tell me to. They say, <laughs> Look cute. But no, uh, yeah, Pillow Talk is, is the main thing, which is our podcast. That only started in April. So I I used to be only events and festivals and parties and, you know, club world, whatever. But then because of COVID, we had to transition. So now started just posting stupid stuff, funny stuff. I, I think it's funny. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I, I don't know. I agree. <laughs> and then we have another show called Public Indecency. We do street interviews with, with crazy people and drunk people and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So it's just, uh, it's kind of like a rated R funny vibe. Okay. So I'm going to start off by kind of asking you, we'll get into how you kind of got there in your journey, but what is your personal overall thoughts on social media and its advantages and disadvantages? I've kind of been asking everybody I've had on so far, and I want to get your opinion on social media in general. Well, well now, yeah, if, if you're not on social media and you, you know, oh, I, I don't do social media or my business doesn't, everyone should do it everyone it's kind of like your digital passport at this point mm-hmm. you know pe- people do look unfortunately every time you meet someone first thing people do is they check the, their instagram or yeah. if you're going to work with someone or if you're going to go on a date with someone or you're going to ask them to promote your brand or you, a- anything you do in life now it's kind of like they check your digital passport kind of mm-hmm. so it, it it really does represent you whether you like it or not and if, if you're too cool for it you're just living in the past at this point so you know if, if, if you don't care about social media, that's not cool. You should you should care just because it's important. Mm-hmm. And of course, you have so many followers, like over 200K on your personal account. Do you feel like you said it kind of shows like your digital passport? Do you feel like people look at you a different way because you have so many followers and because you're verified? Absolutely. I, I will yeah. admit that once I got verified, everything changed. And it's so mm-hmm. stupid because it's a little blue tick beside your name. In what kind of way? And what kind of explain that? Yeah, pe- people, I'm the same person I was before the blue check. Big deal. Yeah. Care. Got a little blue check. Or something. But, you know, me, look, my boy Darky over here, he's got no blue <laughs> checks. Guess who, uh, guess who the girls go to more? <laughs> yeah. Thank God so, he's handsomer than me. And that, that's a perfect deal. He's better looking. He's cooler. He's smarter. He's more jacked. He's tatted. He's charming. He's taller. Everything. So it does- he's got it all. It does some things, but I got not. the little stupid tick. Uh-huh. So, so, so yeah, thank God so, for that. But no, I, absolutely. With, with working with brands though, uh, with getting people on my podcast, with DMing celebrities to come on my podcast, uh, with everything in life is just, you know, I would, to be honest now, I wouldn't trade it for 250 grand. I wouldn't trade it for a house or a Ferrari because it's so important. It's, it's a dumb little tick that changed my life, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And so let's go from before you even had the tick. Let's talk about the journey on how you got there and everything. I know that you were on a host of some television shows like E Talk and was it Much Music? Yeah, I was on Much Music. Yeah. yeah. So and, do you think? Uh, and MTV Canada. And MTV Canada. That's a big one too. So how did you kind of even get there? And do you think that being there? kind of put you up to push you to social media even more or did you kind of always have a large following no it was well it was in 2013 so instagram just came out okay there was no stories there was no comments on pictures like back in 2013 so it didn't really help me at all to be honest but it definitely got my name out a little bit in canada for sure 
and it, it showed that I, I could, I could kind of be on camera, I guess it's, you know, but, and it, it showed me what I wanted to do eventually in my future. Thank God for COVID by the way, cause I would have been stuck doing parties with Ronnie Ray. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you, what, like, at what point did you think, okay, this is a hobby and now I'm going to turn it into a career of social media? Yeah. It's only been a year of posting content actually, because it was January. We started doing silly TikToks. That doesn't even really count. Yeah, we went to Vancouver, but in April, uh, yeah, you know what? We just said one day me and Dark just looked at each other and we said, let's just do it, man. You're funny. I'm funny. So we posted a couple videos. People started laughing. They kept, some of them went viral. We're like, okay, it's not as cringe as we thought because it's so cringe to post your first anything. I yeah, bet when you cause... posted your first podcast, you're like, Ugh. oh my gosh, yes. I'm still in that phase, but we're getting out of it. <laughs> it's the worst. It's so easy to just buy a new outfit at Zara. Ask your friend to take iPhone pics to any of us. Be able to edit it and change. Filters on it and just yeah. keep up with everyone else. That's mm -hmm. easy for, and everyone does it. To post, put yourself out there. Just trying to be funny or trying to do something cool with videos and trying to build a following when you have nothing at the beginning and you're getting 40 likes on it. It's so it, it's so cringe and hard to take that first step. You just got to do it because if it, people people will support you. Your friends will at least. And uh and the snowball effect to go from there, especially TikTok, I would say is the most important platform at this point. Cause you know, you post on Instagram, your followers see it and that's it. Reels help a bit, but on TikTok, you know, as everyone knows, they show it to hundred people based on how those hundred people react. Uh, they'll show it to another 200 okay, wait. people. Slow down on that. Explain the more of, you know, about that, because I don't think a lot of people know that whole algorithm of how they run the TikTok kind of. So for example, so pillow talk, Instagram page, I can promote it all I can. The guests can, dark, whoever can try to push people to it. But, and then once you have those followers, it only showed a, a small percent of your followers, everything you post. And that's all you get. Whereas TikTok, whereas I would say 99.9% .9 of our, of our podcast fans now, our supporters, our followers, our engagement, everything comes from TikTok, not Instagram, okay. not YouTube, TikTok, because TikTok, how it works is having followers is cool, but only a small part of having uh your tiktok because they there's a for you page instagram you look at your your follower page but really you're just scrolling and they get to know who you are what you like and it's a crazy algorithm and then they show it to 100 people your every video you post gets a fair chance if you're good okay. you'll make it if you're bad you won't and fair shot if you're a good singer you'll, you'll become famous if you're a bad singer you won't and if you keep working at tiktok you'll get to where you want to be so our podcast clips having a having someone listen to 30 40 minutes of you is hard but having people like your clips is easy. So we post all our clips on TikTok and those clips go viral because of the algorithm. So they'll show every clip, every TikTok anyone posts gets shown to a hundred people based on the watch time, likes, comments, shares, engagement, blah, blah, blah. All that gets taken in effect. And based on how those people reacted, well, they'll bring it up the ladder or down the ladder. So if people keep liking it. Your clip will go viral uh, based on those things Ran from random people. So if you have zero followers, you can still get 10 million views if everyone likes your clip. Mm -hmm. And do you think that you have like any tips or what, I know you said that you give little snippets of your podcast, but like, how do you know what kind of works for your audience or what kind of works for Instagram? Like, do you pick those videos or? No, so I'm, I'm 29, you know, I'm old. I'm, I'm actually, I'm not as good as people think at social media. We have a great team. So okay. uh, we hired this guy from Ottawa, actually, Jamie. He's a TikTok coach, pay him a full monthly retainer, Okay. But it's actually a little bit expensive. So worth it though. So we brought him on. We have calls with him twice a week, just about TikTok. Sounds crazy, but it worked. It works. And, <laughs> and he looks at our clips and, and then the whole team gets on. So we have our videographer, editor, our social media girl, then us as hosts, whatever. And he, he looks at our clips and he goes, okay, uh, check your average watch time on that video. It was a 40 second video. Your average watch time was 22 seconds. Repost it with 22 seconds. Oh. Uh, the number one color is yellow. Boom. Use yellow font and big. Have a, make a mistake in the caption so people correct you in the comments. Mm -hmm. uh, add a question at the top where you, you think people could argue in the comments so it engages people and then people fight in the comments and then people are spending more engagement on your foot. All these dumb little things like that you would have never thought of when you're just trying to post and hope for the best, it's actually all very calculated. So having him on board then our clips all started going millions of views, millions of views, millions of views. So, so you think that it's more of like what people 
kind of catches their eye and how long and it's like a full-time job rather than finding a niche or do you think you could also like go through like it, it, then then they so people will check your page and then they'll be like okay this looks like something i want to follow sure okay. so you got to be good but uh having those little things perfect will get you the difference of a 10 million views on a video or 300 views just mm -hmm. those little things you know and so you kind of run your audience by you put out your content and what you want to do and then whoever wants to follow you it's not like you no we, take... we even transition towards what they want okay so, how do you exactly. kind of find that out <clears throat> so we looked at all the views that did well videos uh -huh. that did well we looked at the ones that didn't so ones that didn't do well is uh me telling a story sexually something happened to me a, a, a minute long funny story mm -hmm. people didn't really care about those as much as i thought because I thought I was funny. Uh, people really like when, one time I brought a girl on to sit on uh, Pillow Talk on the podcast and we called it Ass and Answers instead of Ask and Answers, Ask Girl. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And we do a segment called Ass and Answers. So we brought Liv Blay on to ask uh, Gene Simmons, I forget what she asked, but something about his tongue. And then that went boom. So we're like, okay, people like one crazy question. And the questions for those are always, uh, one or two, A or B. Oh, like, okay. You know, like a would you rather type question. Uh -huh. What would you pick question? So, so something they could probably even think about in their head too. If they, they can answer to. too in the comments. Uh -huh. We try to make it 50-50 so people have different opinions and fight yeah. about it. So boom, now we have a question where people are going to want to engage and comment on. We have a pretty girl asking it to a celebrity with an engaging caption with big yellow fonts and then chopping for the ADD going boom, 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 boom. So you're taking all these 10 things, you're putting it in 15 seconds. And that's the recipe for millions of views. So you've really just figured out what's worked perfectly. Yeah, it sounds crazy that we go that deep into it, but. Uh -huh. And how long have you had your podcast now for? Only since April, it's still new. And you're already at almost 250K on Instagram. And that's not well, even the. The rest of it is our views. Like we have probably, I don't know, 20 to 30 million views on TikTok. And I remember one time you told me when I was asking you about this podcast, you said you have to do it on, you have to include YouTube too, because people want to see it. People want to yeah. see you. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. You were just going to do audio. I was just going to do audio. So yeah. you're the reason yeah, why. You looked in the mirror. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> you're a little batty. Look, I'm not even that cute. And people would still rather watch. People, a lot of people watch this you. dark is so handsome. <laughs> okay. So you kind of touched on this, but how do you plan your content? Like, I remember also you told me you're like post once a day on TikTok, post once a day on TikTok. Do you plan like, okay, I need to post this many times on Instagram, this many times on TikTok at this time. Do you have that set out or is it just whenever so you're kind of creative? I have a cool sheet okay. with our social media manager on it, okay. with our video production company on it. And we have, okay, we filmed this. This is when we're going to have the deliverables, first draft for review. This is when we'll approve it. This is when Kush will post it. And then we have uh, nine different accounts that we post on. Mm -hmm. Well, if you count Instagram, TikTok, and then uh, we have the the Coley line coming out. We have the Pillow Talk Rockets, the girls. Yeah. We have uh, the Public Indecency Street interviews, Instagram yeah. and TikTok, Instagram and TikTok. My personal, Dark's personal, Instagram and TikTok. So nine accounts total that we post on. It's not random because if you just leave it to chance and you go out drinking for a night and you're hungover and then you fall out of it. And mm -hmm. I Yeah, I've even been track, a You're going to lose track of nine good posts a yeah. day on nine accounts a day. So we post almost nine different videos a day on nine different accounts. It's all organized from a month before. You have to wow. do it that or you're gonna lose track. If you just say like, oh, I'm bored, let's film one. And then you're not bored for a week, you're not gonna film anything. So we have film schedules, deliverable schedules, posting schedules. And did your team kind of tell you that that's how you should be running it or did you find, figure that out along the way? I just, know I, fit, I, I saw myself, okay, it's summer, you know, when I was bored, I was posting way more because mm -hmm. I, I had the time. But when I was like going on trips or when I was in Miami last year, I wasn't posting ever on TikTok because I was busy every day doing mm -hmm. this, doing that. No, you, we need to figure out to keep it. We've only been posting regularly on TikTok for two months. That's it. Wow. So that's because finally I got it all organized. Okay. And I was also going to ask you. I know you've moved to Los Angeles from Toronto. Did you, do you think that you did that because of society telling you kind of that like it's more so the spot to do it and that that's your kind of standard of living that you have to achieve if you're in the we industry? We came here for five weeks and we brought the whole team down. 
Mm-hmm. So it was me. I brought down Dark Bush, Terry, Zach, Jamie, our TikTok coach, and then a guy that we uh, that runs a big Instagram page that works with us. So I brought down everyone, six people. We're only supposed to do five weeks and go back to Toronto. Mm-hmm. But then after two weeks of being here, me and Dark were like, not going home. Fell in love. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Everyone here is doing what we're doing. Uh-huh. Uh, in, in Toronto, I, look, I like Toronto better as a city. I like uh-huh. my friends there. I like the, the people. I, the, yeah, the yes. people. <laughs> but here, it's just the opportunities times, not times two, it's times 100. Like everyone here, you know, instead of pre-drinking, playing flip cup, like in Toronto or beer pong, here, everyone's talking about content and filming Taking stuff. content together, everyone's collaborating. Talking. Yeah, you should do this. You should meet this. Everyone just wow. starts shaking hands and networking 24 seven. Whereas Toronto, you all kind of, we all kind of know each other at this point here. The city's so big and massive. Every time we go out, we meet a new amazing connection for what we want to do. and. These mm-hmm. people want to film this with us and oh well you, you should do a podcast with them oh we're going here on this trip with that and oh i can get you guys free like everyone's just like helping each other and get to where we all want to be whereas toronto we were kind of the only ones like the, there's great other podcasts like there's your boys uh where you do it ernesto's there's our mm-hmm. boy jack there's a lot of ricky there's a lot of great podcasts there but like you know there's four or five of us doing it we know we're all friends but here there's a million people doing what we're doing so it's, it's just nice to meet everyone. You talked about connections and like how you kind of had more connections there now. Is it like actually more or just more people in the same kind of industry? Like obviously you probably get brand deals, meeting new people that want to collaborate with you. Like, do you think that there is full time, like more people there and like more money, more connections and everything in some place like LA or? It, it validates us. Like when you're, when you're the Canadian pop star, you're the Canadian pop star. You know what I mean? Like, I love Donald Webster. I, I love Simple Plan. But, you know, they were the, I love Headley. But they uh-huh. were the Canadian bands. Yeah. You got to break into the U.S. if you're going to make it. You know? Yeah. You don't yeah. want to just be the the Toronto. Like, like I love Cardinal Fisher. But, like, you know, he's the Canadian rapper. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, what you is. Wanna Drake. You want to be Bieber. You want to be The Weeknd. Where do they live? They're from Toronto. Where do they live? In the U.S. Where do the No Boys live? <laughs> Yeah, all in the you know, US. Everyone eventually comes here because you got to be here. More opportunity. You have to. Yeah. Or you're, or you're just the, the Canadian version of what's really happening. So what are some of your biggest achievements that you've had in your kind of journey with social media? Huh. Biggest achievement. Dark, Would it think? be like who you've worked with or a brand deal? So what's a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a tricky question. It's a good problem to have being not a, like not able uh, to answer that. <laughs> you know what? I thought it was really cool that we met with the head of all the nightclubs in LA. Okay. That, that was, and then like the the owner of H Wood, which was the guy. Second week here, we had guests us to go for lunch, and I was like, "That's cool." Okay. Because like, he's like the goat. You know, he's like the the guy that runs all the restaurants and clubs in LA. He, like. And you had a past with your restaurants and, or I mean, bars and everything in Ottawa and Toronto. So obviously that's a huge thing for you. Yeah. And he, he asked us for lunch and he said, he looked at it after like two hour lunch of talking to him. He said, I don't want to work with you guys because you guys are going to take over this city on your own. And I don't want competition and I don't want to oh, teach wow. my 30, uh, 35 years experience to you guys. Cause you're just going to become even bigger monsters and you're already about to be so, uh, Let's be friends, but I'm not working with you guys. And as much as like that, what that was kind of <laughs> shitty or, or bad, I was good like, good compliment though. Very good. I was like, this is the <laughs> coolest compliment ever. This guy is the biggest legend ever. And he's telling us, I am already scared of you guys. And we've been here two weeks. So even though that's not like, oh, we had this person on the podcast or when we hit our first 10 million views or when, to me, that was like, wow, this legend believes in us so much already. We've been here two weeks. Imagine in five years from now, imagine six months from now, imagine two months from now, you know? Probably, yeah, probably even gave you a bit of like boost of confidence to even try yeah, harder. Sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we do belong here, yeah. Push in the back, yeah. So I know that you kind of don't take any days off. I guess you have it planned, even if you were to be hung over or something, you can't do something that day, but is there any kind of days that you take your online presence and just turn it off and you're like, you know what, I need to sleep all day or not even touch social media because i need to give some time to myself every su- every sunday evening okay see ya Nothing. i've never been on a date on a sunday in my life <laughs> i don't i don't go to i usually don't go to brunch parties 
Uh-huh. If I have to, because my all my friends are going, whatever someone's hosting, I'll pop in, not drink usually. And then Sunday night, I take a bunch of weed edibles and I just die. And I turn my phone off and I don't talk to the world and I sleep 12 hours if I can. And then and Monday you're... I'm up seven. Oh, I wow. take a bunch of Adderall and then Monday I, I usually try to work 14, 16 hours. Okay. So Sunday nights and that's all it takes is like a few hours for you to just. It's goodbye, goodbye world. Yeah. And then Monday morning, it's it's the hardest. I take two Adderalls. Usually I only try to take one or two or, or one-ish if I even do it. But Monday <laughs> and I'm back. Yeah, you're buzzing. Week. And then by the end of the week, if I'm getting tired, I know, okay, I have Sunday. So just fight through it. You have your rest day. And I obviously know you well enough. And I know that you are the same person online as you are. Like you showcase yourself on your stories, on TikToks, on your um, podcast. Is there any kind of sense of you that feels kind of drained and stuff from being such like this um, in the spotlight and people watching you all the time? Well, you know what? I I, I get, I'm very extroverted, you know? Mm-hmm. And then uh, I, I, so my doctor told me this, they said, <laughs> they said <laughs> we're getting uh, deep. You, you, your, your battery, so extroverts, their battery charges from social interaction. Okay. And introverts, that's actually what it means. And introverts, uh, their battery drains from social interaction. Oh, the okay. Yeah, so introverts charge their batteries when they're alone and extroverts lose battery when they're alone. So when I'm by myself, I lose, I, I'm exhausted and I'm tired. But the, but if I if I could stay up 72 hours in a row if I'm with my best friends, mm-hmm. I could just, if I could just talk to my friends not not ever get tired because I'm, I'm the extremist of extroverts is what my mm-hmm. doctor said. So it really just pushes you to keep doing your job. So that's like perfect for exactly yeah, what you need. I've been up this week and I've been, I've been miserable and uh, <laughs> just working like depressed and I'm not funny and I'm not posting funny shit because my battery is draining. Uh-huh. But now I'm with dark today and look how happy I am. Yeah. And I kind of relate to that too because I guess I'm somewhat of an extrovert, but like if I find myself being not as creative, I'll feel like, okay, you know what? I have to meet up with some friends or I have to take an off day and just leave and be with people and take it away from whatever I'm doing because it really does give you creativity. To so you, you, you always want your little right hand around. Like you yeah. always have a <laughs> or your, you know? Some, some friend, anyone. <laughs> like to be honest, even though I can afford to live alone, Mm-hmm. I want roommates. Yeah. I did it. I did a two years at Bisha by myself and yeah, I got more work done, whatever. And it's nice to have your own space, but I, you know what? We just live six people in a trap house in LA and I <laughs> loved it. If we all had our own bedroom, I love it. I like having people around all the time. And um, do you feel home. like that's hard to like yeah. balance your film, film TikToks? Like planning to film a TikTok is so cheesy. Like come over, we'll do this one. And then you get there. And, eh. But if you're just <laughs> vibing with your boys and hanging out, you're like, yo, yo, let's film this right now. That's the funniest content we put out. Agreed, and it's Art? more authentic too, because you're yeah. not planning it too hard. Like meeting up with our boy Reza and planning it all day. Okay, you bring this wig and then you get there and it's just like, okay, ready to film? It's awkward. When you're just uh-huh. hanging out and just doing dumb things and then that's where you get ideas, bounce ideas. Yeah, it's fun. So do you think you've kind of balanced, I mean, you've nailed your like healthy lifestyle balance of taking your Sunday off, working hard, planning all your stuff, or do you think there's kind of more you can do into making it even a healthier kind of lifestyle balance? Or are you okay with like how you do it now? I think it's doing okay. Uh It's definitely working. So it's definitely working. Do you see any kind of pitfalls in social media or anything that you would change if you could? You know what? It's getting so crazy now that I, I'm blown away by OnlyFans. Okay. okay. I can't believe that every pretty girl in the world now, 90%, let's say not you, but uh-huh. most are doing porn. Uh, so now girls are growing up, not taking anything seriously in life because they're thinking, okay, all I need to do is do one photo shoot a day, post them, and then uh, eventually I'll get a bun- enough followers to launch my OnlyFans. And then they're making more than dentists, lawyers, doctors. Mm-hmm. They are. Why wouldn't they? I, I, if I was a pretty girl, I'd have an OnlyFans. Dark might launch his soon. And he's a Do guy. you think that obviously that's one way of doing it and that's more so? It, it just changed the world so much. Now girls, they look in the mirror and they go, okay, I'm set if they're pretty because they think, 
or they have a body, whatever, whatever, even if they're not that pretty. I mean, a lot of girls are doing really well in OnlyFans. And do you think that that kind of is going to be where social media is going with like subscriptions and stuff and people having to pay to f even follow you and see your content in the future? Do you have close friends that are doing OnlyFans that you, like five years ago, you would have never said like, oh, that friend will be doing porn in five years, right? <laughs> I don't, but other people you must, could. You must know 50, 100 girls that are doing it. Maybe from the city, but not close friends. Okay. <laughs> you know, now God, it's like normal friends of ours, like Carly Lawrence, you know, our home. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only like big OnlyFans girl, like everyone's doing it. And it's just for guys, it's kind of crazy too, because they need to change their whole brand and image of their digital passport uh -huh. to being, you know, like our boy Nathan, where it's just shirtless pics all day. And then you attract uh, homosexuals mm -hmm. that want to sub to your OnlyFans. And now he's making a hundred grand a month. But some people can even do OnlyFans and just have people pay for like more exclusive, just pictures of them. It doesn't even have to be sexual. I know like some people, or I've heard of them that do it and just use it respectively. Like some people are moms and, like, and they still, the to, yeah. yeah. That's a and they good just, sometimes they're a bigger figure and have more followers that people want to see just more in depth of their lives. So I feel like maybe even in my head, I'm like, maybe even Instagram will go into that subscription um, thing to see more so in depth into their lives or behind the scenes. I just think in 15 years from now or 20, whatever, uh -huh. let's say this was just a COVID phase only fan. So they yeah. probably won't, but let's say it's going to be kind of crazy that we can kind of look around when we're older and we all have kids and say like, Oh, she's naked all over the internet. That mom, her too, him too. He does videos touching himself. You know, we're all going to be dads one day. We're all going to have gone through this little phase where everyone did stay at home porn. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of crazy. And it's like, what is your, what's going to happen when your kids see it and what's going to happen? Cause you post something and it's never, you can delete it, but it's not deleted. It's still out there. Porn yeah. stars back in the day were like, there's only a handful of them and it was this crazy thing. Now everyone's doing it and it's like, porn stars always talk about it on these documentaries. Like, oh yeah, my life is completely different. Like everyone has seen me have sex. And it's like, that's going to be everyone. <laughs> Uh -huh. And you brought up Carly Lawrence and I know you're friends with her, but you've worked with so many people that are celebrities and have a huge following as well as you. Do you have any kind of way of like who you want to work with and who you choose those people or like, do you just yeah. randomly I'd, I'd like think of it? I'd like to get bigger into the A-listers, like mm -hmm. real musicians, you know, like Bieber, Bieber land, you know what I okay. mean? Like, so I when you say A-listers, like, you mean like, like top of the notch, notch celebrities? Yeah, like A-list actors, you know, uh -huh. big names is, you know, I, I don't really want to do uh, Toronto OnlyFans girls anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do people that are major successful and top of their craft and interview them. And, and what would you even ask them? What would you want to sit down and talk to them about if they're... That's the thing. Because of our show is so rated R, Mm -hmm. When we talk to those people, they always kind of say like, oh, I can't come on Pillow Talk. Like, for example, our friends Loud Luxury, okay? You mm -hmm. know them from London. Uh, we're hanging out with them on Saturday. We're going to Vegas with them. And I said, let's do Pillow Talk. And they're like, they would never do your show. And I'm like, no offense, but like, we've done like 30 bigger names. Mm -hmm. What, they're too cool for us? But like Harry Jowsey isn't? What the hell does that mean? Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, but they can't answer those questions. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider doing like different sort of questions and kind of, yeah, or would you, do you want to stick with what you're kind of doing now? Cause it's working. Well, okay. So, so we did Gene Simmons. He's 72 years old. Right. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to promote his vodka. So he looked at our podcast and he said, oh, I don't want to talk about the 5,000 women I've slept with. That's what everyone wants to talk about. So for him, we cleaned it up. So now I use his episode as an example to celebrities. And I say like, look, we, we get it. You, you have a reputation, you have a career. Mm -hmm. You can't just come on and talk about your one night stands. I get that. But yeah. So, so we, but if it's a smaller guest, who's just an only fans girl, let's say, then you got to get funny content out of her. So yeah. every episode is different in that way where we steer, but people look at the clips that go viral, which is usually the, the ones that are a little, yeah. You know, you're not going to get a viral clip of Gene Simmons being like, you know, my vodka is five times distilled, blah, yeah. blah, blah. A clip that goes viral is him saying that. But some people still want to see that. And if they see him on a TikTok, they're like so interested in him that they'd still, yeah. 
but so I guess there's that fine line of like trying to get funny content out of bigger names who don't want to do the crazy mm -hmm. things. So, yeah. So speaking on that and how many people you've kind of even named yourself, obviously I think you're successful. What is success to you? Oh, until you have a mansion in the hills with enough cars, you bought your mama house. Okay. You can do anything whenever you want. Does it have anything to do with followers or the people that you've like had on your podcast or had collaborations with or, or is it kind of like your style of living and having that? Okay. It's all about what you build. Mm -hmm. People don't care what you say. They care what you build. Mark Zuckerberg. So yeah. Just, very and true. It's so true. When you think of so, like someone, it's not, oh, that, that person told me that he's going to be rich one day. No, people look at your product. Mm -hmm. What did you actually do? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you so do? You, so you think it's more so what you've done and like how your what you've built. So right now let's talk about your podcast. If you're talking about it like that, it's more so how far that's gone than your personal, like how many followings and audience you have on your person. You would rather your podcast do better than. Yeah. You, okay. 100 percent. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's all about what you build. So like there's the nightclub ultraviolet uh -huh. uh, social press agency, my marketing mm -hmm. company, you know, both doing well. Hello talk doing well. Public DC street interviews finally picking up going viral. Like it's all about what you're building. If I just go on camera and try to, oh, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be this guy. Mm -hmm. Shut up, bro. Yeah. They would need to see facts I got and followers for being cute. I mean, for girls, I guess it's, it's cool. They can become famous from that. But like for a guy, get to work, you know, what, what are you building? Mm -hmm. So what are your kind of short term and long term goals? Just working on the podcast and getting that bigger and better and more names and more audience and all that or what's your kind of short and long-term goals okay so we came here and we filmed what four, 14 episodes 14 okay, episodes wow. in five weeks wow with, that's all, a lot. with all big names all in a nice mansion full production boom 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 all good well done episodes so mm -hmm. we came here we filmed film 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 so and then we did street interviews with lexi pantera we did uh the hollywood boulevard ones we did the red carpet ones so we filmed like we filmed almost a TikTok a day at that house too. So we were just constantly filming, working in the business. Yeah. Now taking a step back to work on the business. So now okay. uh, I'm getting Pillow Talk Drip, which is going to be the name of our, our clothing line coming out. Okay. Yeah. Getting that, the website, the marketing, the back end, the shipping, the branding, the design, the, the you know, you, you're the fashion girl. <laughs> Building all that right now is the main focus. To promote it with it, we're going to be doing a... To promote it, listen to this. Yeah, we're doing go a ahead. fake breast implant giveaway. Yeah. No way. Yeah. So the more money you spend no on the way. website, the more ballots you get for the giveaway. Wow. So getting that set up right now. And then also short term, Dark and I are... Should I tell her about the show we're doing? Oh, yeah? Okay. We're doing a show called... Uh, we're doing a reality show with a is it is it the one that I've seen? Oh no, you're starting one, or is it the one that you guys both applied to? What, what are you talking about? The couple show that you applied to. Oh no, that's that's small time. Okay. But, no, we're doing a, a YouTube reality series. I haven't told anyone this yet, but it's gonna. Be are you called, sure you want to tell me now while you're being it's gonna be recorded? Light and dark make a porno, and it's oh, gonna no. be a reality documentary series about dark having a making a sex tape and me directing producing it and we're gonna film every step along the way oh man celebrity cameos and this and that then he's actually gonna do it and then at the very end it's gonna go on only fans and you can buy it to watch it so oh my that, gosh that's the next three things we're doing the, the boob giveaway the clothing line and then the the porno thing you are very creative you are <laughs> very very creative okay my last question is do you have any tips for people who are wanting to make social media successful for them Tip, tips for social media? Tips for people that want to make social media into like a career or successful for them. Well, you, okay, do like Sarah Simkowski. She okay. gets it. Every day she's posting something. She's she needs to post she's more, but. Post, 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 post. Do a TikTok every day. Take, take pics every day. Make it different, make it cool. Look at your idols, copy them. Get yeah. ideas from them. Care, don't just post and hope. Make it better than, Look at your idol be like, mm -hmm. how can I be better than that person? Try really hard to make get the best pick if you want to do picks. You want to do videos? Don't make a, a dumb skit. They're doing it in HD. They're putting captions. They're editing it with boom, boom, boom. Edit mm -hmm. it like them. Like, you're never going to be the best if you don't 
try. So, so true. Yeah, you and have like take inspiration from people. Take inspiration, try and, to beat them from the yeah. start, and just keep trying to get better every day. Post every day, work at it every day. Treat it like a business. You have to. Mm -hmm. So true. And if people do it on top of like what they're doing right now, work and stuff, would you recommend they like you plan ahead of time and yeah, plan like, yeah, plan what like Sarah when you go do picks like you do you just kind of like oh I'll snap one now I mean I'm sure you do sometimes but sometimes you got to plan yeah you have a whole mood board <laughs> and you plan your aesthetic right of what yeah. your feet's gonna look like right yeah if that's what brands talk, look at that's it. write your ideas say I'm gonna film this one that day with this person at this house I'm gonna edit it this day post it that day you just mm -hmm. keep you have to or you're, or you're like my boy Reza Jax okay you, you know him from Toronto uh-huh okay. well I've heard of him I don't know him. he films every day he's TikTok famous now it took him forever, but he, oh, wow. he made it funny and he's millions of followers. He hasn't stopped. He films three per day, Monday to Friday mm -hmm. from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Every day he films wow. for four hours a day on TikTok. Nothing was happening. Didn't stop for a year and a half. Wow. Now Good for him. Those are all millions of views, millions of followers. He's rich. He gets he's making six figures a year from TikTok collabs alone because so he never gave up. Consistency. Consistency. And, and, and they're good. His videos mm -hmm. got better and better and better and he works at it. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, well, I'm sure so many people can take from that as however it works in their life. But I know we're running out of time, so I'll just finish up with saying thank you, Ryan, for all your information and perspectives. I hope everyone took something from this episode. I'm going to finish with the quote I found to motivate everyone. Stop doubting yourself, work hard, and make it happen, which kind of really relates to what we were talking about today. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure to write any future questions or topics you want to hear about and follow the good, the bad, and the future on Instagram. See you next Sunday to talk about professionals within the fashion industry and social media and where it is headed with social media manager, Marissa. Thank you.